Hello and welcome back to the Ms. Artastic podcast. I am your host, Kathleen McGivern, and in today's episode, we're going to be diving in on something a little bit more special and intimate. This is going to be my letter of advice to a first year art teacher. So, this is a letter of advice to anyone who is a first year art teacher. Uh, from someone who has been down your path. I'm going to be sharing my tips, must-haves, and ideas for traversing the simultaneously scary and exciting path of being a first-year art teacher. You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. This episode is brought to you by MsArtTastic.com. If you're a teacher or art educator, you can find ideas, tips, advice, and art resources for art education at MsArtTastic.com. Find the link in the description or go to MsArtTastic.com now. So a letter to a first year art teacher. Your first year as an art teacher is so exciting and rewarding. And I absolutely remember getting hired to make magic with kids. I spent hours preparing materials back in the day or time before there was TPT and blogs uh, or even before social media existed or like your smartphone. (laughs) Definitely had filing cabinets to pick through. Um, And just scanning through my university art history books for ideas to inspire kids with. I was just so energized and excited and after a few months uh, things kind of began to change. I was staying after work till dinner time or even 7 p.m. right making these cute little sketchbooks for my students, uh, preparing all the teachery things to make this magical experience for the kids and on top of it was all the marking, the grades, report cards, feedback, lesson planning, unit planning, and honestly I was so lost and then on top of it like nothing can prepare you for a challenging class I started with my first class as one that I got a contract um for after the initial teacher left on stress leave um and to put it to put it in perspective this was so long ago I mean these kids are well into their 20s at this point at least (laughs) but um they might have their own families and kids at this point (laughs) to be honest now I think about it but I was oblivious to what a challenging class uh was actually like and to be honest it was pretty smooth for the first few weeks with them and then the honeymoon phase ended As a first year teacher, there's nothing more overwhelming and stress inducing than watching a honeymoon period disappear with your students. It's a point in the year or term semester, whatever, um, with every single class that you'll ever teach where where things will get comfortable and everyone settles in and you get to know each other. I will repeat the last part. (laughs) You will get to know each other. Oh, so well. I found myself crying one day at the at a red light on the way to work in my very first year, wondering how was I going to make it? Like, this was not what university was like. This is not what my practicum was like. Everything was like magical rainbows and bubbles and sparkles and sunshine when I did my practicum. Also, I did my practicum and I was traditionally a high school teacher. I was used to working with young adults, people that were, you know, 15, 16, 17 years old. Um, And I uh, went back and at this, my first year here, I, I ended up teaching part of the year in a elementary school classroom. (laughs) And so things were, things are very different when you do a sudden change like that. So anyways, I was at a red light crying on my way to work. And again, I was wondering how was I going to make it? How could I get everything organized? How could I keep up, keep up with all the classroom management and lesson planning and teach these kids? How was I going to reach them and inspire them and help them? And, and just how was I going to overcome all the challenging behaviors that were now very much on display in the classroom, even in the school foyer, on the field? Basically, you get the picture. And suddenly, 
there was honking behind me. I could hear it honking. Uh, someone's blaring the horn where I am. That's a very common thing. It's a lot of honking. You don't, <laughs> no patience on the road. <laughs> and someone was shouting. I didn't even realize that the light had turned green. I don't know how long it was for. I'm sure they would have, now thinking about it, I'm sure they would have honked regardless um, if, if it was one second. Because, again, the patience for that is very low here. And that was it. I just basically was like, oh, gotta go. And then I continued driving, right? Like wiped the tears and then kept going. And I faced the rest of the year showing up, making mistakes and persisting through it. I decided to do a few things. So let's dive into that next. So find a mentor teacher. First, my recommendation is to get a mentor teacher. And I got a mentor teacher at my school that I was at. And honestly, this is one of my biggest pieces of advice. Now, it was not a traditional mentorship program. They, I just kind of like latched on to them like a leech. <laughs> Without the blood sucking. But befriend your coworkers and anyone with a lot of, a, a lot of teaching experience, right? They have been through this. Buy them a coffee and ask them if you can pick their brain um, about their routines in their room. It doesn't matter if they're like if you are upper middle, elementary or middle school. It doesn't matter if you ask a kindergarten teacher to watch them or talk about them with their routines. Because let me tell you, you're going to learn a lot um, from somebody in a different grade. Or it doesn't matter. You're going to learn a lot from somebody else. And just you can always adapt and modify things for your own personal experience and classroom and style, right? But again, pick their brains about their routines in the room, their management style, when and how they assess and plan, everything. Um, I spent a lot of time visiting teachers and that taught a range of different subjects and grades. I started out in high school. Um, I ended up in elementary and middle and things were very different. I And then at the end of my career, I mostly taught like grade four and down. <laughs> I really went down the scale, like, all the way. I don't know how that... <laughs> Anyways, this is how things end up. I remember when I was in university, this is totally sidetracked, but I remember when I was in university, my second degree for teaching, um, <laughs> the practicum teachers were like, you know, uh, people often never end up in the grades that they expected they're teaching. A lot of people switch. Like, some elementary teachers go into high school. A lot of high school teachers switch into elementary, and I thought... No way. That would never be me. <laughs> That's so crazy. Why would you even say something like that? <laughs> I was wrong. I've been wrong a lot in my life. <laughs> but that's how you learn, right? And that's part of the journey. Um, but anyways, I ended up spending uh, the majority... Okay, so backing up. Uh, basically, I talked to teachers in kindergarten and up, right? I really learned a lot from kindergarten teachers. Um, and... This turned out to be the best thing that I did because although I was a trained high school teacher, I ended up be spending the majority of my career in elementary. And if I didn't do this in the beginning, like I would have been so lost. I would have never guessed, like I said, that I um, that I would end up being an elementary school teacher uh, because in university, my attitude was literally this. I said, I will never ever go to an elementary school. <laughs> I was so wrong. <laughs> I mostly, I would say most of the time spent my time in elementary. I started off the first few years in high school and then it just switched and that's just how life happens. And at first it wasn't my choice. I was supporting. Anyways, it doesn't matter. That's just what happened. <laughs> but you might even pull techniques and strategies into your own teaching. So like I borrowed a lot from primary teachers. They really know how to corral a class. Like have you ever watched a primary teacher gather their ducklings? Like it's, <laughs> it's like magic. Especially kindergarten. Like watch them as they corral their class and like build relationships. It's amazing. Those kids are walking around most of the time like, <laughs> kind of have no idea what's going on, right? You can just see kindergartners walking through the hallways. They're always like looking around like the place is like, whoa, I've never been here before, even though it's, <laughs> I don't know. They just have this like look of amazement. They're just amazed by everything all the time. And that teacher is corralling them and guiding them all day. And I'm just like, that is hands down so hard, um, in my opinion. I'm sure for them, they think high school, 
right? If you talk to a high, a, and a kindergarten teacher, they're going to be like, oh my gosh, how could you do high school? And I'm like, oh my gosh, how could you do kindergarten? <laughs> Uh, but anyways, if you ever get the opportunity to observe a kindergarten teacher teaching, this is really something that you should do. Like, I would ask if you can observe them and just take notes um, with their permission during like one of your prep or planning times or see if an administrator will relieve you for a period um, so you could do this for growth and professional development. It's like, honestly, it's like watching a magician. They just get all these little small people who are like five years old to follow along and follow direction. It's literally amazing. And also, like, they are not very patient, but this teacher can um, get them to if they're, at, you know, having classroom discussions, they all want to share their ideas, right? They are kind of oblivious to the fact that there are other kindergartners also wanting to share. They can, they even have this magic trick where they can t- all tell you something at the same time and not even be aware of it. But anyways, um, it's so lovely. And you can just watch that teacher and see how they navigate the situation. It's, you can learn a lot from it is what I'm saying. But our teacher must have something... This is the next part. Um, so first thing was a mentor, get a mentor, find someone to latch on to like a leech. Next is our teacher must have. So some things are a must and some things are a want or wish. For an art teacher, there is a lot to consider that you might need to purchase as supplies and your budget is going to be shockingly small. But remember, you can add on as you go, right? Through the years, you can add on. Okay, so things that you need. One is good pair of shoes, invest, in a good pair of shoes that are comfy, um, that um, you can like wear on concrete floors all day and be comfortable, right? Professional clothes. Um, you might be okay with lots of styles, but like I like to just comfy clothes. <laughs> that was my style: t-shirt, jeans, that skinny jeans, preferably. I don't like things baggy, anyways. Uh, that's and hoodies. I like only like to wear hoodies, <laughs> and there can't be tags on anything because I'll lose my mind. But you might be able to dress up in anything and feel comfortable, and you do you. But don't forget, good shoes, my friend, is a must when you stand on concrete all day. Uh, next is quality scissors and paintbrushes. Like I can let go on a lot of things. But not with these, right? Nothing stops progress like bad scissors and and paintbrushes that like make no marks. Oh my goodness. Some of the ones that come in those watercolor paint sets, like you know, like those plastic, they're usually like primary colors with a black short little bristles. They're like the width, the whole bristles themselves are like as much as what's on the end of a pencil eraser, right? It's very, very limited. And they're like plastic, so they have, like hold nothing. You can't hold water with plastic. (laughs) Anyways, um, I'm sure you you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, I like to spend money here on quality paintbrushes. And I would keep them also behind your desk (laughs) because you spent money on them. Um, Instead of, I would not spend my money on fancy, random, single-use things like pipe cleaners or, I don't know, googly eyes. This is not necessary. You can do other things. Um, whatever it is. I wouldn't buy single-use things that can only be used once. I would spend my money instead on something good like a paintbrush, like a set of bamboo natural hair paintbrushes. I would buy those any day of the week. Okay, oil pastels. I love them. I love them. <laughs> They work for collage, mixed media, on all paper, with resist painting, and you can create still lifes or observe value and form or color mixing as though they were oil paints. You can teach a lot of of art and technicality with oil pastels. And if they break, now you have two. You might even want to purposely cut them in half and take off all the paper. Um, Plus, they're good till the last drop. I am a big fan of anything that is good till the last drop and that I do not have to sharpen. I do not like to sharpen. (laughs) That is a problem as a teacher. Can you sharpen this? Well, your pencil has been dropped on the ground 16,000 times and I will be sharpening that till there is no pencil anymore. I do not like that. Um, So that's why I really like wax crayons and I like oil pastels. Good to the last drop. Plus, P.S., there is no such thing, in my opinion, there's no such thing as dirty 
oil pastels. You do not need to clean them. I always see these Facebook posts of like, how am I going to clean these oil pastels? Just don't. Just don't even care about it. You know what? They're going to be dirty for three seconds at the most. Max three seconds because as soon as you start drawing with them, it is now clean. That is the end, right? As soon as you clean them or start drawing, they're clean. And as soon as you stick them back in a container, they are dirty. It's a waste of your precious energy. And I know that you're busy. And if you're wondering how to save some time, do not sit there and try to do this. All right, next is watercolor paints. I favor these above other paints based on the fact that I like crayons and watercolor paints. I mean, oil pastels, sorry, Miss Red. Based on the fact, I'm gonna try that again. <laughs> Based on the fact that like crayons and oil pastels, they're good to the last drop. I like to get the tube kinds. Um, you know, I'm doing this on a video also, but if you get this plastic, I'm gonna describe what I'm doing. But this is the sound, if you're watching me, it's obvious if you're listening. This is the sound of those cheap plastic palettes. The cheap plastic palettes. And all I do is I get um, now you can either do one per child or to save sanity, you can do one palette that a set of partners shares. And then you only have to have half the amount and store half the amount and prep half the amount and keep track of half the amount. It's just half the amount of work. But you can get these plastic ones, you get the tube paint, you pour it in, right, the tubes. Now I have all kinds of varieties. Don't worry about what kind it is. They're all good. They're fine. Unless you're like professional artists, you don't need to get <clears throat> Windsor Newton for your classroom, right? But these are the two paints. Now I have for a lot of the Misertastic stuff, I have a more affordable, I don't know what brand it is, but they're huge. You can get everywhere sells them. Um, but get the two paints, you pour it in, right? That's pure pigment. And then you let it harden. Harden like a rock. This is my sound of my nail hitting the hard as rock paint. Um, and then now you have a watercolor palette good to go, right? You just mix your water on your paintbrush, dip your brush in water, swirl, swirl, swirl on the paint, and then your paintbrush is loaded and ready to go. And then you just let them dry out completely and they're good to go for next time. I've never washed this palette. You'll see it in literally every single YouTube video. I've always intended on making myself a ceramic one since I, I have, a, I'm in a ceramic studio working, um, but you know what? I just never have. <laughs> but that would be a good art lesson idea, wouldn't it? Having your high school cre kids create a watercolor paint palette. Anyway, it would be a nice idea. I got distracted again. It happens. Okay. Um, but yeah, you just basically add water. You're good to go. You're saving on money. You're saving on storage. That's going to last a long time. I don't hardly load those up and I'm doing this almost every single day. So I'm telling you, it's so good. And plus I find that some of the ones that like are like by Crayola, the pre palleted ones, they just dissolve like instantly, right? Cause I feel like they're, the pigment's been diluted. Whereas that's not. So that's my, my thing there. All right, next is to invest in professional development. So whether it's in books or a course, I would pay anything for someone's good advice and strategies. Uh, one of my favorite books was Total Participation Techniques. I loved it. Take my money, the end. All right, next tip is to be ready to try new things, fail and make mistakes. You are going to make mistakes. <laughs> You're going to fail. It is okay. I have literally made hundreds of mistakes and have failed super hard when it came to teaching at times. Listen, in 99% of instances, the only person who's going to know that you made that mistake in that lesson or whatever it was is you. Nobody else is going to make know that you made a mistake or that it didn't go the way you wanted or whatever it is. Unless your students catch it, then they will know too. <laughs> and the best thing that you can do now is get used to using this as a teachable moment, right? Hey, you're a teacher. We're all about those teachable moments. Um, I, was all, I always told my kids or my students that I made a mistake. 
and then I had to try again. I'd be like, oh, sorry guys, I made a mistake, so let me try that again. And you'll even notice I said that while I was talking about this in this podcast right now, because I'm looking at my notes and I realize I made a mistake. So that's, I do that all the time. That's just my go-to phrase. Oh, I made a mistake, right? I acknowledge that I made the mistake and then I explain that I'm gonna try it again. Um, and then this is again your opportunity to teach growth mindset um, in your art classroom, right? Mistakes help me learn. Um, I'm going to, then you should basically model how you're going to fix that mistake, whatever the art lesson is or whatever mistake it is, right? Maybe if you cut off, cut your paper wrong. Oh no, I cut my paper in half. I, what am I gonna do? Well, we're going to go and ask the teacher for a piece of tape and this is how we're gonna fix it, whatever it is. Instead of going and asking for a new piece of paper and starting it all over again or throwing the whole thing in the garbage, blah, 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 blah. So literally you'll make hundreds of mistakes in your career and it is okay. I know that it's stressful in the beginning, but let me tell you, no matter the job or career, people are making mistakes and you've probably made mistakes at your previous job if you've had one. And this is no different. Uh, kids understand and they need to see that you are a human too. Okay, quick lessons for the art room. So it is always good to have on hand some quick and easy art lessons to use for when you're you're feeling a little off, right? Um, whether you're under the weather, um, maybe you're absent, you need some sub plans, or you just need to get well-deserved breather. Uh, it can take a lot of energy to teach a lot of kids and perform big art lessons because honestly, that is what you're doing. You are performing. You guide kids through a beautiful hook and then you introduce the lesson and then you demonstrate it or you teach techniques or topics. Then you make art with them and then you wrap it up and conclude with your gallery walks or your critiques or your rich discussions, your self-assessment or your student, student-led student displays, right? And all of that takes a lot of energy. So make sure you have some quick art lessons on hand to keep you high and motivated instead of drowning in the overwhelm that comes with all the lesson planning and lack of guidance that goes along with it. All right, so you might be wondering about where to find some quick art lessons. So here are some I lesson, some ideas uh, ranging from free to watch and free to download or that you can pay for at an affordable price that will allow you to be fully prepped in seconds. So the first is that you can find art lessons and drawing tutorials on the Ms. Artastic YouTube channel. I have lots of ideas for quick art lessons and drawing tutorials on my YouTube channel. And you can use flexible mediums for most of these lessons and the videos range from drawing tutorials to full quick art lessons. And I add new videos every week. So make sure you subscribe while you're there. Um, also, I have some teaching strategy videos there that offer more free advice. Um, so if you want to watch, basically, if you want to watch the video versions of my podcast, if you cannot see it on your podcast player, then you can go there and check it out too. Uh, I also have, you can find free downloadable art lessons. Um, I also have those uh, free art tutorials and lesson plans and additional resources that are free to download. Um, so if you're looking for some art lessons that are ready to use to get you started, then a great place to, is to check out the Artastic Collective free art resource page, um, which you can go to www.artasticcollective.com forward slash free. Or if you just go to misartastic.com um, and click the start here button in the top corner, um, it'll take you there as well. There's, or if it, it'll, basically all my websites, artasticcollective.com and Ms. Artastic, the very first thing, the very first link you're gonna see on the page is looking for free art lessons. That's gonna take you to all my free art lessons. I try to make it really, make it really simple for people who need something quick. Um, in my TPT store, so the next thing is in my TPT store, and I'll put the link in the show notes um, and on the podcast description, but there is, in my TPT store, sorry, a resource called 31 Quick and Easy Art Lessons. Um, you can check that out. They're great for elementary and middle. Um, it's essentially a one and done art resource for classroom teachers and art teachers to help you be ready for teaching uh, with four um, art mediums and flexible options for easy planning. So they're just super easy. They could be taught with low time, um, low uh, on a cart, if you're on the move, if you're just wanting to have some quick, 
easy to grab resources they're literally all ready to go plus they have some other um activities included as well um for some worry free planning and again i'll put that link to that resource in the podcast description or you can check out the podcast show notes or find it on misertastic tpt store and finally the find fully planned art lessons so if you're in a time crunch and you just need art lesson plans and examples with assessment and rubrics all done for you, there is a wide range of art lessons, projects, and resources available in the Ms. Artastic TPT store. Literally over 800 resources at the time of recording this um, for kindergarten to grade 10. So whether it's elements of art or principles of design, artists, art history, holidays or seasons, I got everything and anything in my store. And you can check it out by searching Ms. Artastic on TPT or find the link in the podcast description. Hello. All right, so next is to find art teacher resources. So it's always good to have some resources that you reference when you get stuck or are needing support. So I offer a few ways to get this additional TLC to help ease some of the overwhelm that comes from starting an entire career as an art teacher from scratch. And no one understands this except for teachers. It's very overwhelming to go to work to go home, to prepare to go back to work, to go back to work, and then prepare in the morning to work again. It's crazy, right? If you think about it, it's just this crazy hamster wheel. So first, the Mizartastic blog, www.mizartastic.com, is a great resource for teachers. If you want, you can explore uh, the different topics in the blog and different topic blog posts. I have lots of different teaching strategies uh, coming out all the time and anything from art lesson ideas to the elements of art, again, to teaching strategies. So if you're wondering where to start and you're feeling like, ah, I have no idea what I'm doing, then I would begin with just going to MsArtastic.com, M-S. It's the same name as my podcast, right? Everything is MsArtastic, you're going to find it. But if you search MsArtastic, um, or go to www.mizartastic.com, M-S-A-R-T-A-S-T-I-C.com, um, link in the sh- below in the description here, then you can read through the blog. But while you're there, make sure you bookmark the blog or hit the follow button and then save it to your bookmarks bar, right? Especially if you have a, a Google account that's going to be going, you know, it syncs up to all your devices. Like I would save it to your bookmark bar because I have new articles coming out Um, a couple times a month um, in addition to my podcast episodes and sometimes there's more blog posts than there are podcast episodes and I will put in like full art lessons and tutorials in there like I'm not I can't put art tutorials on a podcast right I'm going to talk more about pedagogy and teaching strategies on here or art lesson ideas but on there you're going to find actual images and videos that you can use um, or I'll link to my free resources so it's a pretty good place to start so make sure you Uh, Check it out and it's going to just save you a lot of trouble and pain. Um, I also have a free art teacher focus guide. So if you are looking for a place to start, um, it's basically my uh, a quick and easy guide to give you seven areas to focus uh, to give you a sense of where to start as a first year art teacher is a full of good advice and tips and it's at no cost to you it's free so I would grab that for sure I'll put the link to my free um focus guide for art teachers in the description of the podcast but also if you look up artasticcollective.com forward slash focus then you'll find it there as well Another resource, so the third resource is visiting the Ms. Artastic TPT store. So if you're, again, if you're looking for fully planned art resources, my entire days are spent thinking about how to serve our teachers and meet their needs. No joke. Um, that and making art and making art for kids. Um, so all I do is art and I share my decades of creation with others in my TPT store and on my art curriculum website called the Artastic Collective, specifically designed for art teachers. Next is to, descri- is to subscribe, pardon me, to the Ms. Artastic podcast. There's a lot of advice for teachers on my podcast that is free to access on any of your favorite podcast players. So make sure that you um, follow it. I really try and make sure that you have all the tools that you need to be successful. So give it a listen on your way to and or from work for some professional professional development on the go. And finally, I would suggest that if you're looking for some in-depth art teacher training to enroll in art teacher academy 
Imagine having a program designed for art teachers to help you learn systems and pr proven strategies for lesson planning, classroom management, increased participation, engagement, and motivation, and developing the understanding, developing the understanding or the importance of of art education in your community. So with our Teacher Academy, you're going to learn how to improve your teaching strategies in a predictable and proven way, one that allows you to work smarter, not harder, by focusing primarily on continually improving five essential areas of your job, which are lesson planning, productivity and time management, classroom management, uh, engagement strategies, proactive approaches, and communication. With this course, you will receive a lifetime access to a 12-week program that includes video lessons and that provides strategies and systems that will help you plan, energize, manage, organize, and bring excitement to your classroom and art teaching career. You'll get a workbook to help you plan and grow as you work through the program. You're going to get templates to make everything clearer. As well, you will get 10 professional development hours certificate. Uh, make sure that you check with your local district to see if they will accept PD hours from this program. There's also a very special bonus that includes structured art lesson plan templates um, and has a quick peek pick feature to help you plan engaging art lessons faster. It has creativity challenges and choice-based art lessons and fully planned art projects with a step to step tutorials, lesson plans and assessment. It is called the Art Creation Toolkit and it's an $80 value that you will get free when you enroll in the course. So our Teacher Academy is a comprehensive professional development pro training program designed to help you achieve art teacher excellence through learning systems and proven strategies for lesson planning and structuring lessons and planning your scope and sequence and proactive classroom management strategies um, and unexpected student behavior. You're going to learn how to energize students for increased motivation and engagement, particip participation techniques, and developing the understanding of the importance of art education in your school community so that you can experience increased happiness, confidence, and less frustration and stress. Art Teacher Academy is for anyone who is an art teacher, new art teacher, or is becoming an, a teacher um, and wants to achieve confidence, focus, resolve, and art teaching excellence. It's for anyone who's been facing stress on the job and is struggling with in the classroom, right? Or maybe they're a new teacher uh, and they are, or maybe they're one, you're a teacher in training, right? And you're feeling lost without and alone without guidance uh, for where to start, um, how to create highly engaging and structured lesson plans. And maybe you're needing some classroom management strategies or systems for organization and time management due to an unforgiving schedule and lack of time for planning and prep and ideas for energizing and motivating students for, to participate and create their best work, right? And that's a lot of the time the problem is like getting kids to create their best work. So if you wanna learn more, um, make sure that way, make sure that you go to, yeah, let me see what my link is. I believe it is artasticcollective.com forward slash art teacher academy. I'll say that again, artasticcollective.com forward slash Art Teacher Academy to get started or find the link in the show notes of this podcast post. Well, my friend, that is my letter of advice to first year art teachers. I hope you find something in that in that that will resonate with you that you can try. And then I will see you in the next episode. Well, that's it for this episode. Please make sure that you subscribe to the channel, Ms. Artastic. And if you create anything and share it online on social media, please, please, I would love to see it. So tag me at Ms. Artastic and I will check it out or join the community and conversation and use the hashtag, hashtag Ms. Artastic. And I will check it out that way as well. And you can see what other people are creating who create with Ms. Artastic YouTube videos. Well, that's it for this episode and I will see you in the next.